Hi! Today I'm going to show you how to make adorable Halloween cards with the Stampin' Up! Have a Hoot stamp set and the coordinating Pico Hoot dies. You'll have a hoot making Halloween and Christmas cards with this stamp set. I'm Shelly Godby, the owner and CEO of Stamping Smiles, and for 19 years I've been teaching others how to create their own hand stamp smiles. So after I show you how to make my adorable Halloween card with the Have a Hoot stamp set, I'm going to show you another card, a clean and simple card, with the same set. Here's a closer view of the Have a Hoot stamp set and the coordinating Pico Hoot dies. Pico Hoot, how cute is that? <laughs> and when you order the two of these together using the special bundle item number I've listed right here, you'll save 10% on both. Look, we have three stamps for Halloween. Well, we've got a scaredy cat, well, scaredy cat owl hiding behind a jack o' lantern. I mean, look how friendly he is. And he looks a little frightened and uh, a little bit startled over here with the spider. And then for Christmas, we have the present. And then the owls with their snow caps on and look some mistletoe and some greetings. And then with the dies, you have a die for all six of the um, owl stamps, these frames and some mistletoe. And look, we'll be using that spider web too. So we need to start with some stamping because we'll be doing some die cutting and embossing. So what I have here is some Whisper White cardstock. And whenever you want to stamp on white or vanilla cardstock, I highly, highly recommend the Stamp Up Whisper White and the Very Vanilla Cardstock. Both have a smooth, tight finish so you get a crisp, clean image. You want that when you're stamping. And I'll be using Stampin' Blends, so I need to use the Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad. Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers. And let's get him good and inked up. How cute! We're using the one with the spider. Oh, <laughs> it was hard to pick a favorite. You can't. They're all so adorable. All right, so that's looking good and inked up. And I like to turn it over and make sure it's looking good and inked. All right, so I'm going to be punching this out with a circle punch. So I would need to leave myself plenty of room. There we go. You know what? Let's just go ahead and even do that to make sure I have plenty of room. What I have here is the two and a quarter inch circle punch. Open that up and then center this in here. And I just love this, that we can stamp and then center around it. And let me catch that so it's not floating. Okay, I want that to that branch. And then that looks just perfect in there. There we go. So we have that done. But I want to die cut him so he can pop out. So let's ink this again. Okay, plenty of room. Actually, you know what? There's so much room. I could go ahead and do it twice just in case I don't do a good job. But I'm telling you, this new magnetic cutting plate, I've become this really good die cutter. All right, so we've got that done. So what I need to do is grab my new Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And we'll do some die cutting and embossing. So here's my new Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And so you can see the handle. There we go. But let me turn it now. And it folds up like this, so it doesn't take much room when you stick up on a shelf. And then you just fold these down. There we go. There we go. So we'll start with our die cutting. And all of the plates are numbered, so it's really easy for me to tell you the sandwich. We'll start with plate number one. And then I'll be using the thin dies, so I need plate number two. Okay. And I'm so excited about this. Both of these and two cutting pads and the specialty plate come with the purchase of a Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. This is an additional purchase. Plate number five. This is the magnetic cutting plate. It's a self-healing mat, but it's one entire magnet. Love this thing. I couldn't wait for that. I was as excited about that as I was the new die cutting machine. And you'll see why. All right, so we put this down. And, uh, and then we just need our die that coordinates with it. And there we go. Here he is with the spider. And we just want to center that around our image. What I love about the Stampin' Up! dies, they fit right up to the image. We're not trying to balance white space. So I'm just looking for that black line all the way around. Looking really good. And then I have vellum cardstock. Won't that look good for our spider web? So here's that spider web die, 
and this is really very intricate and this magnetic cutting plate and the all steel construction of the stamp and cut and emboss machine we're going to cut through it like butter all right so then to finish it what we need is a number three cutting pad so back this up i want to place it on there there we go and then we'll go ahead and crank this through and just so pleased how easy that is to crank and not popping and jumping all over the place love it all right so here oh my gracious how cute is this <laughs> all right adorable i'm getting to be the best die cutter ever because it's one solid magnet and it's not moving because i'm not chasing around and wait till you see this too wow it just all that almost all that stays on there where I hardly have anything to pick out then I just go to the trash and you know scrape that off into it it just cleans these out it does such a fantastic job I got so excited about the magnetic cutting plate <laughs> that I forgot we have embossing to do so let's start with plate number one and then I have the cobweb 3d embossing folder and this is where that specialty plate that comes with your purchase of a stampin cut and emboss machine or you can purchase it separately comes in all right because it requires a bit of a different sandwich all right so what i have here is my crush curry cardstock and if you get your cardstock wet before using a 3D embossing folder, you get an even deeper image. It's fantastic. So I have here a Stampin' Spritzer, and so it doesn't warp on me. I have alcohol in it, rubbing alcohol, 91% instead of water. Water works, but this dries quickly and I don't get the warp. So look what a nice fine mist I get on here. And so we'll place it in here. There we go, close this up. Put it in hinge first. All right, so no 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 cutting pad on the bottom it's just plate number one our embossing 3d embossing folder if you're using a regular one it's different and then we need plate number four this is a specialty plate for the 3d embossing folders and that'll be the perfect sandwich if we use a regular cutting pad it wouldn't be quite thick enough you wouldn't get this great deep image wait till you see this this is so cool isn't that awesome so our die cutting and embossing is done so i wanted the base of my car to be crushed curry but i really feel that a embossing folder weakens it so when i want it to be the same color i just cut this a little bit smaller and i have a link to my blog post um, with this card and all the measurements for you all right so i'm going to use mini glue dots i like the mini glue dots when embossing because they're extra strong because the embossing it's not laying flat so this gets in there super strong and you open them up and take your paper to the dot we want to avoid touching them and taking away from their extreme stickiness and typically i would do one in each corner but we embossed got it wet so i just want it to lay nice it's not worth skimping on a couple mini glue dots to you know and not have it lay nice for you all right so there we go so that's the base for our card doesn't that look sharp mm. all right yay all right so now our owl and um we're going to color him and i'm going to start with soft suede is my go-to color for wood just love it and color color this in now i'm using that fine tip because look we have small area to color in here and we'll be coloring the owl that we just die cut so I can pop him up it looks so good all right there we go well if you like to color the Stampin' Blends are just a pure joy okay let's come over here you just get fabulous results okay and 
under his claws. So I got this far when I made my first sample and then I thought, how am I going to get the sky around him? Because I die cut him and it die cut the, the spider, but not the tree. I'll show you my solution here in just a bit. Okay, so we have that and then I have the dark and I can do, see these lines? They show us where shading would be. So without even thinking about where light would hit it, you can just hit those lines and give it some extra shading. Okay, so we have that done. And well, we might as well do our owl. And for him, I'm using the cinnamon uh, cider. All right, so again, let's use that smaller to get in around here. I can't wait to show you my sky. Super simple. It was just figuring out how I was going to do that. Isn't that a great color for an owl? Cute, 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 cute. So let me stop there because my tendency, I think of watercoloring where I put down a wash over the entire thing and then do the shading here. I've got the darker color. Let's hit those areas. And then let's go along and do a separation. See when we do some color that separates his wing from his body, from his head. We'll just put a little bit of shading along there. Okay, we'll do some more in just a bit. And get up and in here. It's easier to color while well, you have a bigger piece, but I like to color afterwards because if I did all the coloring and then I did a poor job die cutting, I wouldn't be real pleased with myself. So I just have to hang on. Okay. And then let's go hit those feathers and these little marks they gave us. We can come along here, a little bit more shading. Think about where the light was hitting them so it creates a shadow over there. Just a little bit. Okay, looking so good. Let's put these up. And then I have Daffodil Delight for his beak and his claws. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. And then while we're doing all of this, let me show you my spider web. All right, adhesive sheets. The adhesive sheets are fabulous because you would have, this would have been turned into a self-adhesive die cut. And I can, I've done a lot of videos with them. I can't find mine. Only thing I can happen was I was going on a trip, you know, and a lot of things on my mind. Have you ever had two things in your hand and the one you mean to keep and the one you mean to throw away? thinking I threw them away. I couldn't find them. So this leaves me with doing something that I don't love. <laughs> this will work. The multi-purpose liquid glue. And but now I have to be really careful. And I should have my silicone mat underneath me. But so now what I need to do is use this. Oh, there we go. A little bit dried or oh, see, I get heavy handed. That's why I love the adhesive sheets. Really quick. I don't make a mess. And outline all of this. You know, hit all the different. So you can see it's going to take me a little while to do that. Um, but when you let that air dry, it becomes translucent, which is really nice because if I put that down right now, glue would be squirting out all over and see that is completely dry and I have it all over and that's going to adhere on there beautifully. So you can use this, um, but for these intricate die cuts, highly, highly recommend <laughs> the adhesive sheets. Okay, so now for this piece of paper, because I was trying to figure out how to do my sky. I thought, well, let's see what happens. So I started with crushed curry all right, so to open our pads, you pick it up, slide it in. There we go. And we get have the sponge brayers. 
wonderful things. So I'm what we're doing, I'm rolling it across. We call this loading the brush. I'm rolling this across to get a good color on there. And then I'm going to roll it across the bottom. So don't start at the edge. Keep start before and keep going to get off. Because if not, you end up with um, it really uh, laid up um, a big line of it at the at the edge. Okay, so I'm done with that. So my next color and a different sponge. All right, and you get two of these, two handles, and I think four sponges. Very nice. And it's just a smooth. So again, we're loading the brush. So now my pumpkin pie. Let's think about my night sky. There we go. And so the brown was able to handle the orange and the yellow okay. I thought, okay, cool. That's working. There. That's looking really good, huh? And then it's about to get better. So let's take that away for now. I'll need that when I use the black cardstock. I'm going to put all that on black cardstock so you can see. So hopefully I remember to bring that back. So this, oh, look at him popped up. So adorable. So let's go ahead and do that. When I say pop up, I mean with Stampin' Dimensionals, these foam adhesive dots. One, two, there we go. Press down with your thumbnail. It makes these pop, this backing pop up, easy to get off. Oh, so, so cute. And then with the black Stampin' Blends, I had him um, cut out, but then he was popped up to the same height and I didn't care for that. But with the black, I'll just be able to cover right up what we just sponged in. So that worked out really well. And then he stands out really well. And then if you wanted to, you could take your Stampin' Blends again, although I think it looks good, and go over. But I think the brown looks fantastic. I didn't feel a need to have to go in and, and do that again. How stink and cute is this? <laughs> and so easy. It worked out beautifully. So now let's bring back, bring this back. So what I had in mind was to put him on here. Cute, cute, cute. And up in the corner, isn't that great? It just looks like a spider web. The white was a little stark, and so the vellum was perfect. Okay, and see, we've got that down. And so now we'll put him on with some stamp and seal. Put my finger where it's a little rough right there. There we go. Put some of this on. Cute. These are spooky. Just adorable. It's, it's a fun little spook, right? Okay. And so that looked not quite finished to me. So what I decided to do was get some more basic black cardstock. And we punched him out with a two and a quarter inch circle punch, but this time I'm going to use the two inch punch. Punch that. What I want is that hole. Now I'm going to take the two and a quarter inch circle punch again, center it around and make myself a little circle frame for him. Oh, let me move it down a little bit. And look at that. That is just a cool trick. Let's use, I'm going to use the stamp and seal. You could use the multi-purpose, but then I need to let it dry and I just rather keep going. I don't think many glue dots would be a good option for this. There we go. Let's just get this off this side though. Okay. And now when he's framed, this will look so good. And of course it'll fit because it's the same size punch. And this will just look, it'll peel up, pill up as I rub it. Doesn't that look finished? Don't you like that a lot better? Oh, cute. Adorable. And so now what I need to do is my greeting. So I have here some Whisper White cardstock. And the greeting, <laughs> have a hoot on Halloween, is from the same stamp set. 
So back with the Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad. All right. And we'll stamp about right here. Straight up and down, no rocking. Oh, fantastic. Life is good. <laughs> okay, so I did, I wanted to have this decorated up a little bit. And so what I have here is the Banners Pick a Punch from the August through December 2020 mini catalog. All right, and so we'll fit up this end. Make myself a little banner out of that. You can layer with that one. See all these different sizes. Fit this in, but you know what? I like to turn over and make sure it's really centered. And that's looking pretty doggone good. Whoops, until I moved it. There we go. And just make that little banner. And so for this to go across here, oh, so, so cute. All right, and so um, I'm going to do a couple more things to it, and we're almost done. I wanted to give this a little bit of color. So what I have is some pumpkin pie cardstock. Back again with our Stampin' Seal. Oops, there we go. Just that little bit of color peeking out. Doesn't that look sharp? And just trim that a little bit. I don't want that hanging over into the banner. There we go. Fantastic. And then I thought, well, this needs a little bit of help. And I went a little bit over the edge here. Let's trim that. Paper snips, wonderful. Just the nicest pair of scissors. And so to decorate that up a little bit, I got out my Rhinestone Basic Jewels and the black Stampin' Blends. So I use the light on the spider. This is the solid black. And we'll do one of all three sizes. So you can take the Stampin' Blends and whatever color you have in them, turn your rhinestones and your pearls into colored. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> So, um, you take your pick tool will work, but right now I have these paper snips handy. And we'll place these on here. One. And I did one of each size. Looking pretty snazzy, huh? There we go. And, and then I put that on here. and then all this on to the card. Well, at this point, I thought that's really pretty nice. I just wish I had a little something more. Well, I do have a little something more, and here it is. Look at this. Doesn't that look like web? Oh my goodness. So this is, what do they call that? The metallic mesh ribbon. <laughs> that looks so cool. And so back with our stamp and seal. Put some on here. There we go. And I, I won't try to tie a bow. I did do another banner. And I'll tell you why I didn't end up with a banner. Because it was going off the edge of my card. And I, I feel like we have a palette and we need to work within our palette. So I decided, nope, let's stay within our palette, the size of our card, and just trimmed it off right here. There we go. And then now, because this has some stuff on it, um, you know, uh, it'd be hard to put adhesive on there. So we'll use, if I can find them, they're on my table here somewhere, mini glue. Oh, there they are. Would have bit me. All right, so now we'll use the mini glue dots again. Just super strong. If you don't have those, you really need them. And look at that. Doesn't that make that look more special? Oh, love it. And so then... Back with my all-time favorite accessory, Stampin' Dimensionals. You know, I say when it comes to cooking, butter makes everything better. Well, when it comes to stamping, Stampin' Dimensionals make everything better. They just, instead of just laying on their flat, we'll pop it up. It just makes it that little bit of extra special. Here we go. And there we have our adorable have a hoot card. Oh my goodness. So cool. All right. And so I promised to show you 
a clean and simple card with the same stamp set. Adorable, adorable, adorable. <laughs> All the supplies to make my adorable Halloween card with the Have a Hoot stamp set and the Pika Hoot dies are listed below and available to order now in my online store www.shopwithshelly.com. I'm Shelly Godby teaching you how to create hand stamp smiles. Thanks for watching.